493-0308. You're six minutes away from a live episode of Free Talk Live, brought to you by Freekeen.com. Listen live at freetalklive.com. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,170 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $315. Antiwar.com reports, following an emergency meeting of his cabinet, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed confidence that the International Criminal Court would reject the Palestinian application for membership out of hand since the Palestinian Authority is not a state. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas acceded to the Rome Statute on December 31st, effective 90 days from his signature. There's been no indication out of the ICC that they intend to reject the Palestinian application. The Israeli argument that the Palestinian Authority is not a state is also a questionable supposition as the Palestinian Authority is broadly recognized as a provisional government and the UN General Assembly has granted Palestine the status of a non-member observer state. The United States has also made it clear that they strongly oppose Palestinian membership in the ICC, though whether the ICC is taking U.S. and Israeli objections seriously is unclear, since after all, both nations have signed the Rome Statute but never ratified it and both refused to allow ICC jurisdiction over them. Abbas pushed ICC membership after failing to get a UN Security Council approval for an end to the Israeli occupation by 2017. The US vetoed that resolution at the behest of Israel. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports, the lawyer for jailed Al Jazeera journalist Peter Gresty has formally applied to the Egyptian government for the Australian's deportation after Egypt's highest court ordered a retrial for Gresty and two colleagues. Last year, Gresty, Canadian Egyptian Mohamed Fami, and Egyptian national Bahir Mohamed were sentenced to 7 to 10 years on charges including spreading lies and helping a terrorist organization, a reference to the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood. The High Court in Cairo ordered the retrial on Thursday on the grounds of procedural flaws in the trial. The original trial had been condemned by human rights groups and Western governments and prompted the United Nations to question Egypt's judicial independence. The imprisonment of the reporters has been a thorny issue for Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as he seeks to prove his commitment to democratic reforms. Defense attorneys said earlier in Cairo that the new proceedings could begin within a month. Despite the widespread criticism of the case, Sisi has cited the independence of the judiciary. However, he said in November that he would have preferred to have deported Gresty had he been in power when the journalists were arrested in December of 2013. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Associated Press reports a federal judge says that Florida's county court clerks have a legal duty to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, but he stopped short of ordering them to do so. U.S. District Judge Robert Hinkle issued a ruling Thursday in Tallahassee Federal Court responding to requests to clarify his previous order that Florida's same-sex marriage ban was unconstitutional. He stayed that order, but the stay is scheduled to expire at the end of the day on Monday. The association 
representing county clerks, said the ruling applies only to Washington County, where a lawsuit filed by two men became a key basis for Hinkle's order. Gay rights groups said Hinkle's order applied statewide. Hinkle warned Thursday that clerks who don't start issuing the licenses when the stay expires could face future lawsuits or other legal consequences. Hinkle said while his order does not require a clerk to issue a marriage license to a same-sex couple, the Constitution requires the clerk to issue such licenses. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Surgeon General warns teens the cinnamon challenge is not for pussies. Taylor Swift is now dating the Watertown boat, and a middle-aged funeral director buys a flashy red hearse. We pity your pathetic dependence on this for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. This is the Onion Week in Review. A study released this week by the National Institutes of Health confirmed that for the 25th straight year, wolf attacks remain the leading cause of death in the United States. The Human Health Agency's findings confirmed that being viciously killed by a ravenous wolf claimed the lives of over 800 thousand Americans last year alone, with researchers adding that one person in the United States dies every 40 seconds from a violent wolf attack. The mortality rate associated with wolf attacks vastly outstrips the death tolls of cancer, stroke, and chronic respiratory disease. People should know that anyone... Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Derek J. And Danica. And we have some really great stories lined up tonight. Uh, Danica, you're going to tell us about 10 Bitcoin resolutions for 2015. You might tell us about pot pie being redefined. We can find out Ooh. more about that possibly later. And Derek, you've got something. Robot criminals? They're breaking the law. Nobody mm. knows what to do about it. Oh Robots my. apparently breaking the law. And I've got a story that is sure to rustle some jimmies. <laughs> Buy local is bad economics. Ooh. But... First, we're going to start with the 10 Bitcoin resolutions for 2015, and Danica has that story. Yeah, absolutely. So if you remember about this time last year, Bitcoin was pr- reaching at about $1,000 of Bitcoin, you'd say? Uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, I think at the highest I, I saw was maybe $1,200, um, but again, it just really depends on who you purchase from. Uh, So the article says a lot can happen in 365 days. A year ago, um, one Bitcoin was worth 770. So I'm not sure where they're getting their their status about that. I mean, again, it just really depends on who's selling, who's purchasing. Right. Um, But well, and also remember last year, Mt. Gox was still in business, mm, and it, it was I think spring of last year when they actually went completely bankrupt but a lot of people equated mount gox to bitcoin and whatever whatever the mount gox price was was the price that people said so the bitcoin average uh and there's actually a website bitcoinaverage.com where they do a weighted average of all the exchanges the Bitcoin average could have been at you know nine hundred dollars, but if the Mt. Gox price was at seven, then people would have said, "Well, Bitcoin's worth seven hundred dollars because Mt. Gox." Yeah, you are absolutely correct about that. Uh, so back you know, last year, when it was worth seven hundred and seventy dollars, governments around the world were either terrified of Bitcoin or laughed it off as a passing fad and said it was harder to find a place. It was going to be hard to find a place to spend your Bitcoin. Uh, now, today, you can buy Bitcoin for about 300 ish or so dollars. Governments and financial institutions are starting to understand the disruptive potential of the Bitcoin protocol and digital currencies. And Bitcoin shopping options are no longer limited to just stock purchases. Right. There, there are, I, I believe, you know, 
50,000 or so merchants that accept Bitcoin. And more are coming up every day. I, today, I just found out that iWeddings.com, um, which, you know, as the name suggests, sells engagement rings and other wedding doodads, is starting to accept Bitcoin. And also, Green Man Gaming Company is accepting Bitcoin. So if you were looking for a way to use your Steam purchases to get some of those games, you can do that there. So more and more are coming in every Doesn't single Steam month. Doesn't Steam take Bitcoin directly? Um, you have to no kind indirectly. Of, yeah, you indirectly. Have to get indirectly. Yeah, you have to okay. get a Best Buy gift card and then use Best Buy gift cards to buy Steam. Yes, okay, so that's the way around it. So, like Derek said, you know, in, you know, indirectly, yes, but this is a little bit easier. So, in the spirit of making resolutions for the new year, members of the Bitcoin community should look at 2015 with a fresh perspective. Surely, we've gone through the phases of first learning about Bitcoin, becoming enamored with the idea of digital currencies. And then perhaps even a bit jaded at times because I've never had anything bad happen to my Bitcoin, but I do know personally two people that have had their Bitcoin stolen from them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have we've it, we've all got friends who've uh, either locked themselves out of their wallet oh, or no. they've had their passwords <laughs> stolen. They're probably or... the same friend. <laughs> they could be. <laughs> I wonder. None of you have either had any of your bitcoins compromised or anything like that. Fortunately, no, not That's at this good. point. I always use, and I recommend this to others, that they set up two-factor authentication. It's oh, just absolutely. a way that you can add an extra layer of security to your your passwords and your accounts. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely appreciate the two-factor authentication. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's go over the 10 Bitcoin resolutions. So reason number one, remember why you got into Bitcoin in the first place. <laughs> it to is, get rid of the Federal Reserve System or at least have something that I can use that would allow me to you know, use the paper dollars as little as possible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day happenings like, oh, Bitcoin keeps crashing. Oh, Bitcoin keeps going up. It's crashing. It's going. It's crashing. I it just... It can just be really frustrating. Yeah, know. and if you look at the silver and gold prices, they keep you know going up and down. And right now, as does the euro, as you know, does the dollar. Silver is like fifteen seventy an ounce. Yeah. Have you ever noticed going into a grocery store and you know looking at say like a package of salsa, and then the next week you notice that it goes a little bit higher, or coffee, for example, notice that it's a little bit higher, and then sometimes it will decrease. And then the, the sizes are smaller. So what used to be an 8-ounce container is now a 6-ounce container, and then in three months it's going to be 20 cents more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, they certainly do have a way with their packaging. Yeah, I remember noticing it because I, um, obviously, I have, to shop, I have to shop on a budget, as do most people now. But when I would look for a particular item, I would notice that one week it would be, you know, 50 cents less, 50 cents higher. The next week, 50 cents less, 50 cents higher. It was, and it was strange. It was, you know, it wasn't really a seasonal item like, say, pomegranates or avocado, right, right. but it just it fluctuates. We'll get back to the Bitcoin resolutions. We do have a call on the line. Joe from North Carolina listening to WPTF. Has some resolutions for Congress. Ooh. Uh, do, do you resolve that they actually, you know, decrease the size of the government? What, what are your resolutions for Congress, Joe? Joe? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, can you oh, hear they me? Were. There you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I made a proposal on WPTF on an earlier talk show, and it went over so well, I, I thought maybe I would try your show and, <laughs> and propose to me. The proposal is very simple. Let's do away with on-site U.S. congressmen and senators. Let's have all of the 435 representatives in Congress, all 100 senators, sit at home in their home district, tie in for session over the Internet. What's the benefit of that? The benefit would be that two, twofold. First of all, think of the money that would be saved by the federal government with, without the duplication of staff. They've got a staff in Washington. They've got a staff in their home district. Well, there's actually three benefits. The second one would be they would be home at home listening to their constituents. And the third benefit is the, the Theoretically, lobbyist. they would be listening to their constituents. Well, but the lobbyists would have a much more difficult time 
if you've got to go to 535 different locations to personally see every representative, that's a lot harder. That's a lot more difficult for a lobbyist. Oh, I, I wasn't Wait, insinuating. You don't think that... lobbyists use email? Well, lobbyists certainly oh, I, could use yeah, email, but, but I, I wasn't insinuating that they would, you know, instead be talking to lobbyists. I was just insinuating that they would not be listening to their constituents. Well, if they were, if they were at home in their in their home district, and the only way, I mean, if, if you wouldn't have to make a trip to Washington to uh, see them face to face. You could see them in their home office. Do you know and, any of uh, your Congress people personally? Have you done this? Do you talk to them? Do you know where they are? Oh yes, I, I know. I know one personally that is. I'd, I'd rather not call any names. Sure. But, uh, she is not available at all. She is never in the district uh, since she was a, this late. This particular lady was elected. She's not been available to anyone. Now she was out there somewhat during the campaign, as they all are. But if they had to be available in each of their districts full time, then uh, to me, I, technology would solve this problem. And to me, that would be much better than having them all up in Washington. They've got to rent apartments, rent houses. Uh, uh, I want to hear more about your resolutions, Joe. So I'm going to put you on hold and I'll bring you back in just a moment. What do you think? Would, would things be better if Congress telecommuted all of their votes? This is Free Talk Live. Ugh, cold winter weather. It makes my skin so dry, itchy, and irritated. Can I get some help, please, for this winter skin of mine? Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing has the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available. Its seven moisturizers help heal skin, so you'll stop itching and start feeling relief fast. Ah, my skin feels like it's been on vacation, even with 10 inches of snow outside. Itch-free, worry-free, Cortisone 10. Use as directed. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about pretty much whatever is on your mind 855 450 free. We've got Joe in North Carolina. He has an idea. He he has uh what he calls a New Year's resolution for Congress. And Joe, correct me if I'm, you know, mis you know, misinterpreting what you're saying. You say that one of your resolutions for Congress is for them instead of actually going to dc to vote and you know do all of basically the legislative sausage making which is where all of the dirty work happens where they write the laws and then they vote on the laws that they should instead telecommute that way they can stay in their home districts and in theory be available to actually wind up speaking to their constituents that, that's correct, and and they would be actually tel- televideo conferencing in, and you could add one little other twist to it if you'd like, and that is you could have in the U.S. House chambers, you could have 435 monitors with each representative represented, represented by his image or his you know <laughs> presence, his video presence, do the same thing in the Senate, allow the public if they still want the sense of what it's like to be able to see what's going on, they can actually sit in the chambers and watch the action take place. But I think the, the most important thing is that the, the K Street crowd, which is the uh, home of the lobbyists, they would have a very difficult time, or a more difficult time, I would say, influencing the decisions because if they wanted to meet with these representatives face to face, they'd have 535 visits to touch all members of the House and Senate. Or they could just, you know, get some of the local guys because most of these big lobbyist firms have lobbyists already in the various states to influence state legislature. And in North Carolina, do you actually know your state representative? Oh yes, I do. You yes, do. I know all of our. Yes, I know all of my state representatives. In you, fact, uh, I don't want to get into you know politics now, but I have actually run for state office. But we don't, you know, we don't need to talk about that. Well, do you think uh, Congress would actually go for this idea, Joe? Because I don't see any evidence oh, that Congress not. wants to separate themselves from lobbyists. Oh, they would not go for this. That's the reason <laughs> it should happen. Uh, I mean, I think if the public, the public. Uh, if you go back and you think about our founding fathers, the, the reason they traveled to Washington was they had to. There was no other way to be representative without having yourself physically present. Well, weren't but they in Philadelphia? Uh, initially uh, Philadelphia and then Washington after D.C. was oh, But you're saying created. they had to be in the same place. It, it's not important where Correct. it was. It was just that physically right. they Well, they, they could have used carrier pigeons. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they had ways right. of transporting right. information. But the, the, the contrast is here I am sitting in a little town south of Raleigh, North Carolina, talking to you on a cell phone. 
And I'm not sure where you are, but I know you have a national audience that's hearing this. The technology is available now. Right. This would be – think of the cost savings. Oh, uh, it, it would I, certainly save money. So I'm with you on that. I just don't necessarily agree that it would make the members of Congress more accessible because most members well, of Congress – don't want to be accessible. I've gone to Washington, D.C. to try to talk to my congressman, <laughs> and he was not in his office, and you know he wasn't on the floor because they weren't in session that day. He wasn't back in Alabama where I was living at the time. No clue where he was, but I wound up, you know, every time I went in, no matter which office, all I got to do was talk to a receptionist. Did he have, like, aides pushing you out the door? Pretty much, yeah. And I, yeah, I've even tried, you, uh, in various it, states that I've lived, I've tried speaking to my state representative and wound up getting a receptionist that basically tried pushing me out the door. I've got a counter resolution for you, Joe. Instead of proposing to Congress that they go home and work there, I think they should just go home. And that's it. Just not, uh, not just go back to work. I, just stay home an and never idea. come back. <laughs> Well, and one, one interesting piece is that if they only had one office in the district, they would not have an excuse. Where, well, uh, Congressman Smith is over at the Capitol in session. No, or but they in- need those excuses. They're professional liars. They need their out. This is their alibi. Oh, he's in the other place. I agree with that. He's, he's, with, his ho- he's with, that. with his hookers. But <laughs> he's playing a round of golf with the president today. Right. I, I, well, I, could, I would have to agree with you on much of that, but uh, it, I, I just feel like we have, we have a representative that I mentioned, a, a congressional representative, that when that person was elected in 2010, they were everywhere. They were all over the district. Since that time, you don't see that person except around, uh, just around the time election. Yep, season campaign began. season. She'll be out kissing and babies, then, shaking hands. Signing autographs. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Joe. Well, anyway, that's, that's Thanks for the call. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. Yep. Thanks for Bye the now. call. Yeah, man. Good luck. I hope he gets elected. He uh, sounds like a good guy. I'm a fan yeah. of telecommuting anywhere, really. I mean, there's not right. very many jobs that would. Because it does save money. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Congress is not interested in saving money. When have you ever seen them be like, well, let's, we're going to introduce this new measure that's going to save the American taxpayers money? For about three years when Bill Clinton was president. All right. I guess I was too young. Uh, yeah, you, you were just a young little tyke. Uh, All right. So what about Bitcoin? Can we go back to that? Yeah. What yeah. are the resolutions here? Yeah, we can definitely continue talking about Bitcoin. Uh, so The uh, first resolution was remember why you got into Bitcoin. So yes. Derek... What? Let's just sort of go round table here real quick. Why did you get into Bitcoin? Same reason you said, Daryl, because I wanted to starve the beast. I, I want to deprive the empire of the value that I exchange with others. You know, every time I exchange value with dollars or a, an object with my friends, neighbors, or strangers, I am endorsing that trade medium. And when that's the dollar, I'm giving credence or value to that dollar by saying, yes, I accept this. Yes, I give this for value. So instead, I wanted to offer something else. I had been using gold and silver in the past because I'm into you know being independent and depriving the Federal Reserve of, of my uh, value. But right. when Bitcoin came along, I was like, whoa, OK, so now I can use gold and silver over the Internet. And that was really the, the goal for me was to deprive the Federal Reserve of my transaction power. So are you one of these Bitcoin millionaires? Did you buy Bitcoin when it was like five cents? Gosh, I wish. No, I, I'm not a Bitcoin I, millionaire. I but, think we all wish that we right, wish right. got into it. You know, <laughs> hindsight's 2020. But yeah, I was fortunate enough to get into Bitcoin pretty early. I started in 2011, thanks to this show, Free Talk Live, talking about it. And then when I saw that you could really, you could do a lot with it. Um, just the fact that you can send it over the internet, that it's based in cryptography, uh, it was a totally revolutionary idea, and I, I've run with it. I've been funded in Bitcoin ever since. Nice. And Danica, we will find out why you got into Bitcoin. Oh, yes. As well as the other nine Bitcoin resolutions for 2015 when we come back on Free Talk Live. The 
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Officials for the Centers for Disease Contraction and Preservation held a press conference urging all Americans to suck on as many doorknobs as possible. This flu season, the Center for Disease Contraction is recommending that all Americans, regardless of age or health condition, find a doorknob in a high traffic area, wrap their mouths around it, and vigorously lick and suck it until they contract an illness. We recommend sucking doorknobs covered in a visible film of human hand grease. But the fact is, sucking on any doorknob can increase the likelihood of exposing yourself and your family to deadly pathogens by as much as 450 percent. An instructional video released on the CDC's website showcases the proper method for sucking doorknobs while also providing tips for projecting all sneezes and coughs outward, sharing used Kleenexes and toilet paper with as many people as possible, eating three meals a day from local garbage cans, and dozens of other easy bacteria spreading activities. This is the Onion News Network. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live in studio tonight. It's Daryl, Derek, and Danica. And Danica is going to be telling us about 10 resolutions for Bitcoin for 2015. And if you are interested in Bitcoin, you should resolve to go to the Texas Bitcoin Conference. You can head down there for the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas on March 28th and 29th. 
speakers, exhibitions, a great opportunity to do some networking, as well as they will be hosting the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. The second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference is going to highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone, as well as heavily concentrate on where the technology can go beyond just being a currency. If you want a glimpse into the future, you want to be in Austin, Texas on March 28th and 29th. Head over to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get your tickets. And if you use the code FTL, you will get a $25 discount off the $150 admission price, which is a very affordable price for these kinds of conferences. And not only that, the Texas Bitcoin Conference will donate $25 to Sean's Outpost with every ticket purchase when you use the code FTL. So you get an amazing price to a great event, and now you're also helping Sean's Outpost with their outreach and assistance to the homeless. Free Talk Live was there last year. We had a great time, and we are excited to be a part of it again in 2015. Head over to TexasBitcoinConference.com and get your tickets to be part of the future. Danica. Yes. The first resolution for Bitcoin is remember why you got involved with Bitcoin. Why did you get involved with Bitcoin? Most of my professional life, I've worked in the banking industry. Um, I've been a teller. I've been a lead teller. Um, moved into other roles for that. And one of the most frustrating... It's your fault that Bear Stearns went bankrupt in oh, 2008, it... isn't it? Yeah, sorry about that. Not not a whole lot I could do. And, Any... and so a after you like you know embezzled billions from Bear Stearns, you wound up buying Bitcoin? Uh, not not quite, but you're you're pretty close. I one of the biggest things I got frustrated with in the banking industry, as a lot of people are, is sometimes you have to wait for a check to clear. It is so slow. Yes. I cannot believe in 2014, 2015, we're still dealing with and the, the slowness of checks. They place for whatever reason they feel five like. day hold. Yeah, you know, and with, that's five business days. Five business days, not weekends. Even though many banks are now open on the weekends. I mean, like seriously, is it the 1800s? Do we really still have to deal for weekdays for checks to clear and, yes. and wait hours and stuff? When we have a technology that yes. just goes beep, it's sent. Yeah, thankfully they've got a lot of places are offering direct deposit over cash over a paper checks, but you still again it can you have to wait say, until like 8 a.m. before your funds become available. With Bitcoin, I can send Derek J money instantaneously. Boom. And you know, it costs me maybe, what, three, six cents to send it to you? Roughly. Whereas if I want to send money to, say, my one of my cousins in Russia, I might have to pay, what, $30 or something like that to yeah, wire money? Plus, then, then you would have to wind up having the money converted from U.S. dollars to rubles. Yep. And then there would be the probably $50 charge... Because that's international, and then whatever fees hold fees upon fees, well, whatever upon hold fees. the Russian bank would wind up putting on the funds. So you know it could wind up being a week. Well, and having to go through so many middlemen like Western Union too, not just you know, your right. your bank. I mean, so you know it, you know money very fast, um, hardly any wait time, and very slow uh, transaction fees. That's what really got me interested in it, and the fact that I don't have to worry about carrying around you know dollar bills and, and coins that can get lost that there's one advantage to dollar bills over bitcoin you can write on them well <laughs> okay two advantages to uh you know that dollar bills have over bitcoin all dollar bills have trace amounts of cocaine on oh, them please oh come on i don't know anybody that has trace amounts on their bitcoin because bitcoin it's not a physical thing so, like, you know, if I had I, I, uh, Mansers, the, the TV show Mansers, I don't know if it's still on the air, but they did a thing a few years ago, and they determined that based on the minute amounts of cocaine that are on all dollar bills, that you would need somewhere around like $1,700 bills to actually get enough cocaine to do a hit. Wow. You know what? That's not I as don't... much as I thought. Uh... And you know, and, and to that, Mr. Daryl, I say if you do seventeen hundred, if you do seventeen hundred Bitcoin transactions, you're still not going to have enough trace amounts of cocaine to oh, do it. Oh darn! Hit. Interesting. Whatever, whatever. Will What's I do? resolution two, Danica? Don't measure Bitcoin by its price. 
which of course the price of Bitcoin is fundamental to its value, but it's not the only thing that makes Bitcoin valuable, just like we've talked about. Regardless of its price, remember that Bitcoin allows you to send money anywhere for next to nothing. Remember that millions of unbanked people around the world have the ability to manage their finances in a stable and secure way for the first time with Bitcoin. Yeah, this is true for me and my experience. Uh, the people who are newest to Bitcoin are the ones talking about the price. I really don't care. Yeah, Price goes up and down. The value in Bitcoin is that we can send it without permission. The government can't stop it. And, uh, you know, that doesn't change with the price. Certainly. I've heard people say that the price is the least interesting thing about Bitcoin, and I would agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, it's interesting to watch, but I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever, I can still spend it. Yeah. All right, so number three, and this is kind of one in the same as the others, but it says— They just needed 10. They're stretching this one course, out. Of course, yeah. <laughs> okay. because you know, 10 is a magic number. Try not to get caught up in the media hype, good or bad. Uh, that's kind of different. That's, that's true. There's lots of media hype— that uh, doesn't have to do with price. Yeah, or you know, remembering why you got to it in the first place. Uh, but staying up to date with the latest in the industry is essential. Um, but it's important to remember that while stories like Mt. Gox implo- imploding or Microsoft accepting Bitcoin do have an effect on the industry, the most important thing with Bitcoin is that its core technology stays secure and that people keep using the digital currency. Amen. And I, I would say that there seems to be a good bit wider knowledge about Bitcoin now compared to, say, a year ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whenever Mt. Gox wound up going bankrupt, some of the news headlines were Bitcoin goes bankrupt. <laughs> Not a Bitcoin business goes bankrupt, but the headline was Bitcoin goes bankrupt. And that's just, you know, one, it's not true, and two, it just shows, you know, the lack of research that the writer or the headline creator person actually did. Oh, come oh, on, into the story. You're an independent media guy. You know about clickbait and making uh, titles. I hate that, clickbait, oh, and sure. I avoid it as much as possible. I All right, do too. Well, you're supposed to use it. It's effective and it works, and that's why I think a lot of these, I read those articles too where they're like, Bitcoin collapses, but then inside the article, at least they had the wherewithal enough to point out that, yeah, it was just one exchange. It was oh, yeah, the whole were... system, not the whole technology. Yeah, there were so many articles that said, oh, you know, don't put your trust into, bit- into Bitcoin. I'm just kind of like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but what are they going to say? I mean, to the layman yeah. who's never even heard of Bitcoin, and this is a new topic for them, I mean, what are they going to say? Like, largest Bitcoin exchange goes bust? That's not going to get anyone to click. So they need to say, Bitcoin collapses. And, you know, that'll introduce them to the concept. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. And that that I can forgive clickbait. That, that really starts a whole other conversation about <laughs> clickbait. Because I think that clickbait is horrible and should die. So these are uh, catchy and headlines. And click this link and I'll tell you all the reasons why. So these are catchy headlines that get people to uh, go to their websites and drive traffic You can't there. tell me that it doesn't at least pique your interest a bit. It does slightly, but I intentionally avoid it because I can recognize clickbait. That There's like this clickbait Mad Lib formula. Blank did insert verb, and you'll never believe what, what happened. happened. <laughs> like that, that's, that's that's the true. generic clickbait thing. Like this guy let people draw in his van with a sharpie. You'll never believe what happened. <laughs> and so then it what they drew pictures. Yeah, oh, people no. drew pictures, Shocking. and it wasn't anything profane. Like it was just you know catchy little flower designs on this guy's van and. Okay, yeah, I clicked, and eh, not really that impressed. I can't believe it. What do you think about clickbait? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. 
For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about what's on your mind, 855-450-3733. Or we have Skype. You can Skype in to username lrn.fm. You will need to send a contact request first if you haven't already done so. And then we will be able to answer the call. And you know, at my convenience, I'll send you a message asking what your show topic is. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Danica is telling us the 10 bitcoin resolutions for 2015 yes uh i think you're about to go on number four but can you uh just real quick repeat uh one two and three sure uh the first reason is to remember why you got into bitcoin in the first place okay uh second one is don't measure bitcoin by its price okay three try not to get caught up in the media hype good or bad Okay, yeah, and I I know a lot of people that they will whenever there's good news, they'll you know yeah this Bitcoin's going to the moon now, and yeah and bad Bitcoin's news not they're... going to the moon yet, and then when there's bad news, all right Bitcoin's on sale, 
So you know, they, to, they try to, to spin it into you know good news no matter what. And then, you know, of course, there are people that you know might be dabbling with Bitcoin that whenever there's a news story, they're like, be, oh, I, I got to sell it all now. Right. And, or may not be completely sold on the idea. It's just right. barely hanging on. Uh, but number four is uh, keep doing your best work for the industry. So whether you work at a Bitcoin startup or are building something on the blockchain in your downtime, or actively spreading awareness of Bitcoin, stay diligent about consistently doing your best work. This will benefit you personally and the broader industry. And productivity does pay off. So that you know, that's a good reminder to think of when you're you know just trying to do your best to just make it go everywhere that you possibly can. Yeah, and I spent a good bit of time since you know it mentioned you know keep doing what you're doing and try to you know do something to spread bitcoin i completely redid my online store for oh, my cool. website yesterday uh where previously i just had little you know buy now buttons for each of the books that i've published at fpp.cc and i redid it so that there's now an e-commerce site or, or an e-commerce plugin so you can buy multiple copies and the only way that you can check out is with Bitcoin. And there was some kind of problem with the plugin. So after I got everything, what I thought was you know done, I went to try and do a test purchase and something wasn't working right. Oh, no. And I was totally frustrated when I went to bed last night, woke up this morning, did a search for the problem that I was having and found a few forum posts where people were having the similar problem. And all I had to do was deactivate the plugin and then reactivate the plugin, and it worked perfectly. Sometimes all it takes is just a quick restart. Like, you yeah. know, it's computer problems, game problems that usually will solve about 98% of your problems. Yeah. So. Or, or if you've got the old Nintendo games, you have to pull it out and then blow on the disc and then put it back in. No, no, no. You don't want to do that because then you're just going to get, you know, saliva and other stuff in it. But I, I know what you're getting at. I'm just saying in general, that's a bad idea and it's been proven. So please don't do that. But yeah, so the... Uh, Bitcoin store is up and running and it's new and improved. That's really awesome. Glad yeah. to hear that you got that fixed. Uh, number five is learn more about how Bitcoin works. Part of doing your best work for the industry involves being an expert on Bitcoin and how it fits into the real world. Maybe you're a development expert but could devote more time to learning about finance and economics. Or perhaps you know everything about the legal system and how regulation works but ought to better understand how Bitcoin works under the hood. Either way, honing your expertise is a benefit for both you and Bitcoin. And I, I'm going to quote Ian on this, where Ian says, when people ask, you know, how does it work? He was like, the nerds have it figured out. I trust the nerds. Uh, yeah, that's pretty safe like, to I, say. I don't have to understand how the blockchain hash works. 256 encryption something something works to right. know that Bitcoin works. Right. I don't have to spend, you know, hours looking at the blockchain. It is fascinating, but after all I look at it, I'm just thinking, uh, this this makes my head hurt. You know, you just, you know, you can just look back at the uh, amounts that you're trading back and forth, look at the different uh, rises and falls. And it's, just, it's interesting to watch, but, you know, kind of like Ian, I try not to pay too much attention to it because I just, I know that it works. And if there's an issue, I can generally find out about it from someone that has had the issue previously. So what's the remaining uh, four or five? Uh, yeah, we're on number six right okay. now. So we've got a few more. Uh, number six, perf uh, perfect your elevator pitch. It's important to be able to explain what Bitcoin is and how it works in a somewhat brief amount of time. Friends, family, and strangers will all be curious about this mystical digital internet currency and will have plenty of questions. So be prepared with a concise and understandable explanation will help you spread awareness in a productive way. So for people that are not familiar with the term elevator pitch, that's a less than 30 second explanation of something. Basically, think about the amount of time that you would have going from one floor to the next on an elevator. Oh. And come up with a pitch that you could tell somebody in that amount of time. I was just about to ask, what in the world is an elevator pitch? <laughs> Do you have an elevator pitch for Bitcoin, Daryl? You've explained it to millions of people, I'm sure. I I've explained it to a bunch of people, and 
If I had to come up with an elevator pitch, and I, I probably have one somewhere in the back of my mind. Okay, we're stepping uh, into an elevator, and I'm pressing a button. Ding! So, so tell me about Bitcoin. Yeah, so Bitcoin is this excellent uh, cryptocurrency that can be used. There's about 40,000 merchants that accept Bitcoin online. Uh, there's a lot more that are physical locations. Uh, right down the street, there's three different businesses down the street from here where you can go use your Bitcoin. Five seconds. Oh, and you had five seconds to spare. That was pretty good. Yeah. I, that would that would make me interested if I were new to Bitcoin. So I'm impressed. What's the next resolution? All right. The next one is convince others to get involved. Bitcoin is still a grassroots community. Many Bitcoiners, myself included, myself being the author, are eager to spread the word about Bitcoin to friends and family. And if you've followed research resolution number six, you'll have the perfect pitch to spark your audience's interest. I mean, I know that by using my expertise in the banking industry that I can definitely pitch it to my you know, banking friends or colleagues that probably would think Bitcoin would be a threat, if anything. Really? Of course Bitcoin's a threat. <laughs> I, well, I, I think it's... Bitcoin is a huge threat to the banks. But it's not the threat they think it is. It's 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 not that uh, it's unsafe or that there's um, you can cr- cryptographically bank. something wrong with it. Right. It's that people will choose to do business in alternative currencies. Right. Like and that's a threat to the banks. To, yeah. To the, yeah. To their business model, I suppose it is. To the business model, yeah, but it encourages others to do their own individual banking. You can certainly do banking with Bitcoin, but in a way, it's a threat. In a way, it's definitely a benefit. Number eight, and this definitely goes with what you were just talking about at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Attend at least one Bitcoin conference or meetup. And I know that in Manchester, they have uh, Murphy's Taproom. Does Bitcoin Tuesdays or? or Uh, No, they've got the Shire Bitcoin meetup on Sundays. Uh And I think it's the longest running and the largest weekly Bitcoin meetup anywhere in the country. Wow, that's awesome. So, and we've got we we had one here in Keene. I guess we still kind of do, but it's not really promoted or advertised. Not really as, no. as well. It was right before Social Sundays, right? Like right. a short half hour meeting. Derek, have you ever been to a Bitcoin conference? Yes. What were you, what was your experience? Uh, they're incredible. Every one that I've been to has been an opportunity to network with people who have skills that are different from mine, people who are working either within technology or in businesses to uh, bring this Bitcoin thing to the masses. And we're all sort of excited in our own way, me, because you know it, it um, can empower individuals to become more independent and separate themselves from coercive governments others because they just see it as a faster easier method to make money are you a bitcoin monogamist i don't know what that means You're uh, a it, it's a bitcoin type? yeah bitcoin and only bitcoin no other crypto no other alternatives yeah so for oh, i guess a year and a half i was a bitcoin monogamist and that just recently broke because of my concealed carry license fundraiser um i i when I heard about Bitcoin, thought it was great, started accepting it in 2011, 2012, I decided I'm going to go all crypto. I only want to deal in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Litecoin, some other variations. But then I wanted to take the keen police to the New Hampshire State Supreme Court and raising money for that was easy to do with dollars as well as Bitcoin. So I accepted dollars too. Well, no, Bit- Bitcoin monogamous means that Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency and all the other ones are horrible. Is that oh. your... Oh, absolutely well, not. No okay. way. More... Let's find out more about Share Bitcoin when we come back. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. 
You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,184, silver at $16.02, and Bitcoin is trading around $315.93. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Your job, your home, your car, your money. All of these provide you with a sense of security. But what about your family security? What have you done to prepare if all of these things were gone? eFoods Direct has the food security you need. For every emergency, eFoods Direct is food security. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for 50% off their food preparation planning packs. In the news, on Monday, the ACLU and Human Rights Watch demanded that the U.S. Department of Justice appoint a special prosecutor to investigate the CIA's use of torture methods. In a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder, the civil rights groups said the recent Senate Intelligence Committee report on the CIA includes new information that should be properly investigated. The group stated that failure to conduct a comprehensive criminal investigation would contribute to the notion that torture is acceptable. On Wednesday, leaders of the Senate Judiciary Committee announced that they were seeking details from the Obama administration regarding federal law enforcement's use of cell phone surveillance technology. In a bipartisan letter to the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security, Senators Patrick Leahy and Chuck Grassley requested more information about a recent policy change by the FBI regarding how surveillance equipment is used. 16 Iowa farmers and companies have filed suit against Syngenta Ag, for losses incurred after China rejected corn shipments containing a genetically modified seed made by the corporation. The lawsuits state that Syngenta has caused damage to U.S. farmers, grain handlers, and exporters. The farmers also call Syngenta negligent for prematurely selling the seed before it was approved by countries that are major markets for U.S. corn exports. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. This is a Liberty Beat special report. An Austin Police Department detective is suing the city of Austin, claiming the department retaliated against her after she filed an internal affairs complaint for alleged sexual harassment and discrimination. Detective Brenda Bermudez, who has been with the department since 2001, asserts in her lawsuit that during her time with the Human Trafficking Division, male detectives would physically block her from entering the room when they were dealing with nude women during undercover operations, so as to prolong the encounter with the unclothed female. 
The lawsuit also says that male APD employees would show Bermudez, who is a lesbian, online pornographic images of women from prostitution websites and then ask her if she would have sex with them. After Detective Bermudez took the allegations to Internal Affairs last year, she was transferred to the auto theft unit, while her male counterparts remained with the Human Trafficking Division. Additionally, the city reprimanded Bermudez for alleged sexual harassment of her male co-workers. The lawsuit comes on the heels of a recently released dash cam video showing two Austin police officers joking about raping a woman. Police accountability activists in Austin took to social media to lay blame at the hands of Austin Police Chief Art Acevedo, whose leadership they claim has become known for being lenient on misconduct while punishing and firing officers who complain against their fellow officers. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as this story continues to unfold. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. According to a new report released this week by the Pew Research Center, a rising number of weak, emasculated men are working as stay-at-home dads, with a steadily increasing number of feeble, pathetic fayboys choosing to spend their days cooking, cleaning, and performing other submissive duties. Well, our findings indicate that more and more pussified half-men are not going to work and instead are embarrassing themselves by purchasing groceries, packing children's lunches, and denying all aspects of their masculinity on a daily basis. The Onion spoke to one of these effete, pathetic excuses for men to get his response on the new report. I love being able to stay home with Angela. I mean, it's a lot of work, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. What a f***ing pussy. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about what is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Danica has been sharing with us 10 Bitcoin resolutions for 2015. And you're on about to hit, I believe, number eight. So if you could just uh, go back and recap... Uh, what you've covered so far, and then we'll finish with these 10 Bitcoin resolutions. Sure, absolutely. And number eight was the one that we had just barely left on with the uh, conference, so we're just about covered with that. Um, but the first reason is, remember why you got into Bitcoin in the first place. Okay. <laughs> number two, don't measure Bitcoin by its price. Number three, try not to get caught up in the media hype, good or bad. Number four, keep doing your best work for the industry. Number five, Learn more about how Bitcoin works. Number six, perfect your elevator pitch. Number seven, convince others to get involved. And number eight, the one that we left off on, which Derek J. summarized pretty well, um, attend at least one Bitcoin conference or meetup. Um, and uh, for the listeners just joining us this hour, there will be a Bitcoin conference in Austin, Texas, coming up in March Free Talk Live will be there. It's the Texas Bitcoin Conference. You can go to texasbitcoinconference.com to learn more about that. And if you do buy a ticket, use the coupon code FTL. Yeah, so meetups are a great way uh, to share ideas with fellow op- op- entrepreneurs if if you happen to be one. Um, if you're looking to get a business idea or if you're looking for co-founders, that's, that's a great way to do it. So definitely attend at least one if you can. Number nine. Make an effort to spend Bitcoin whenever possible. I, I think this is probably the most important one. Uh, with daily transaction volume at or near its peak, spending Bitcoin whenever possible will only help expand its economy. And paying with Bitcoin helps reassure and support merchants who support the industry. Yeah, I always ask when I'm paying for something, can I pay in Bitcoin? 
usually I get a blank stare. But yeah. more and more, what? more and more, some people are saying, "Oh, yeah, no, we don't, we don't accept that." Or, "Yes, we do. We do accept Bitcoin." Oh, sure. Let me get you my QR code. So, right. what's the most recent thing, Derek, that you have purchased with Bitcoin? Because I know that you use Bitcoin a lot. I do, and I did a lot of Christmas shopping in Bitcoin. So I would say some of the Christmas presents that I that I purchased in Bitcoin: a USB uh, chargeable record player. Ooh, Ooh. That, was, that was a really cool item, and uh, you can even rip your old vinyls onto MP3, uh, plug it into your computer, and not only listen and enjoy records, but also convert them into a digital medium. Danica, Very have cool. you purchased anything with Bitcoin recently? Yes. The last thing that I purchased with Bitcoin um, were two. <laughs> um, there's a thrift store. There's a thrift store here in Keene, New Hampshire that uh, that accepts Bitcoin. James Cleveland actually runs it. And James he, was on with us last Friday. Yes, and it was these two cute little salt and pepper shakers and. When you put the two of them together, it looks like that they're hugging. Like, it's just these two little stick figures hugging. And it was too adorable. I couldn't oh resist. I purchased it with $2 worth of Bitcoin. Cute. Yeah, and I adorable. purchased a sword from the thrift store recently with Bitcoin. And the most recent Bitcoin purchase that I made, I purchased Was it some... the Japanese sword? Please don't it was the Japanese sword. You know, and it, no, it, it was not a Japanese sword. Oh, okay. You bring up a point, Danica, uh, probably without even meaning to, that your item was two dollars, and most businesses won't accept a credit card charge of two dollars. Sure, or yeah. Cards. With rising purchases, many times they'll say your limit must be five, minimum $10. five dollars. Yeah, right. But for a thrift store or a mom and pop shop, Bitcoin is a great option because there are virtually no transaction costs. Mm -hmm. Right. And mom and pop stores get hit with the most with those fees because they're trying to keep their costs low. Uh, so the last one of this resolution list is go outside your comfort zone. However it happens, we should all embrace change, especially considering the amount of change that Bitcoin could bring. Whether you've always dreamed of leaving your job to get involved with Bitcoin full time or you've been hoping to connect with a VC or startup company. What's a VC? Oh, I don't know. I was just about to ask Venture you capitalist. To... Venture ah, capitalist. Thank okay. you. You mean um, vulture capitalist? <laughs> vulture. <laughs> All know. right. So make smart and well-informed decisions about almost about everything you do, but still take calculated risks if you feel it's worth it, and go forth with your best foot forward. And there you have it, the 10 Bitcoin resolutions of 2015. So how many of these are you going to wind up doing? Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to the Texas Bitcoin Conference. I'd like to because Austin is cool, and it would be neat to go there and see if maybe we can start spreading Bitcoin in Austin. Um, but, you know, I definitely want to talk more about Bitcoin. I've been, you know, telling my family about it because my family is, you know, starting to realize the cryptocurrency. So I would like to be able to talk about it more. And I definitely want to make more of an effort to spend it wherever I can. There's this awesome website called Gift, which is G-Y-F-T dot com. I, I've used Gift. Mm -hmm. I most recently used Purse dot I-O. It's a good bit slower because you have to post the items that you want mm -hmm. to purchase from Amazon, and then somebody has to say, I'm willing to buy that. And then they wind up buying it for you, and then when the product arrives, you put the product has arrived, and then oh, the Bitcoin cool. goes from escrow to the person that bought it. So it's a good bit slower than just buying you know, the gift card and then using the gift card on Amazon. But you save a good bit more. So, you know, if time is not of the essence for you, then, you know, it's something to look into as far as, you know, a way to indirectly use Bitcoin to oh, make a purchase. Cool. The neat thing about Gift is that I mean, if you use Bitcoin, you get, I think you if you use other currencies, you can get this too, but you get points. And, right. you know, every certain points you can put those towards another gift card. Yeah, you, you um, get uh, you get the points. most points for using Bitcoin. You get most points. About that's, 3% that's, back. Yeah, that's right. That's more of that. And what's neat is that the application on your smartphone, you can use it to store all the other gift cards that you get. So let's say you get like 10 gift cards from family members because they don't know what to get you. Put them all on your gift app. That way you don't have to go rummaging through your bag to find them. They're yeah. all stored on your phone. So the gift app is awesome, You know, not even just for purchasing things with Bitcoin, but for storing gift cards. Oh, yeah. There, there was something that I had bought recently from Home Depot mm -hmm. 
And I had the gift card on my phone and scanned the phone yep. at checkout. Yep. And done. Super easy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's great. So it, you know, people don't understand how they can use it. Just go to Gift. Gift is great. Yeah. So uh, I I know that you know not everybody's going to wind up being able to go to an actual Bitcoin conference, mm-hmm. but something that is very similar to a Bitcoin conference in a lot of ways is Porkfest. The Porcupine Freedom oh, Festival. Oh, Liberty Forum's coming up, too. And Liberty Forum, to a lesser extent. But at Porkfest, there are you know, dozens of people selling food, and they're taking Bitcoin. There's you know, some entrepreneur guy set up a, a wireless internet thing, and he was taking Bitcoin yep. so that you could have 4G internet in the middle of the mountains. Somebody yeah. else had a Bitcoin only Wi Fi set up just for Bitcoin transactions. Uh, you could get pancakes with Bitcoin. You can get ice not with just, Bitcoin. Not just pancakes, bacon, bacon pancakes. pancakes. And those are absolutely amazing. Yeah. So virtually every vendor there takes Bitcoin. I think the one before that, which was my first one, Probably about half the vendors took Bitcoin or or tried to, but had some trouble. Um, this most recent one that I went to, all of the vendors were except for except for that one, which was brought in by Rogers. But virtually everyone was taking yeah. Bitcoin. And Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com was one of the key speakers at Porkfest last yep. year. And you may recall that Overstock made major headlines for being the largest company at the time to take Bitcoin. And they're actually, they're going all in from what I hear where they're trying to convince a lot of their suppliers to accept Bitcoin. I believe their sales were the highest the year that they started accepting Bitcoin too. Yeah, because there were a bunch of people that bought from Overstock me being one that had mm-hmm. never purchased from Overstock before. And the only reason I bought from them is because I could use Bitcoin. It's not just people who are using Bitcoin. Robots are using it now, too. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And there's robot criminals. I, w- I want to hear more about that when we come back on Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Recognizing that the Constitution could have flaws or need changing, our founders created a procedure for amending it. While it's difficult, amendments must pass by two-thirds of both houses of Congress and then three-quarters of the states, the Constitution has been amended 27 times. Some have argued it's too hard to amend and that courts should instead reinterpret its provisions. But the framers wanted it to be hard. They wanted to prevent hasty and unwise changes and hoped Americans would respect the stability the Constitution creates. Allowing courts to reinterpret the Constitution to match political impulses would allow an elite group of judges to alter our supreme law without public discussion. Our founders created the amendment system to ensure that constitutional changes would be the product of careful and public deliberation. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. 
Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about what's on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've talked about the 10 Bitcoin resolutions for 2015. We also talked about why clickbait is horrible and why it should die a painful death. And we had a caller call in earlier with a, a fairly interesting idea and I, I have to kind of agree that his idea definitely would save money. He had a resolution for Congress that Congress no longer travel to Washington, D.C. to save money. Instead, they should stay at home and then teleconference into Washington, D.C. And he said that that would wind up you know, allowing them to actually speak to their constituents. So I, I don't think that that would actually happen. But if you have thoughts on any of those topics or anything else, your call is welcome. 855-450-FREE. And Derek J., you are going to tell us about criminal robots that nobody knows how to stop? That's right. Headline, robots are starting to break the law, and nobody knows what to do about it from Fusion.net. Daniel Rivero writes, maybe it's a sign that robots are growing up and thus hitting the rebellious stage. The random darknet shopper, an automated online shopping bot with a budget of $100 a week in Bitcoin, is programmed to do a very specific task. Go to one particular marketplace on the deep web and make one random purchase a week. With the provided allowance. Random purchase. So they could wind up buying ebooks. Sure. Of erotica. They could wind up buying ebooks that aren't erotica. They could, you know, buy a lot. There's a lot of legal things that are being sold on these dark web websites. Sure. Most of them are not, however. <laughs> the purchases have all been compiled for an art show in Zurich, Switzerland, titled okay. The Dark Net. From Memes to Onion Land, which runs through January 11th. The concept would be all gravy if not for one thing. 
the programmers came home one day to find a shipment of 10 ecstasy pills. Okay. Followed by an apparently very legit falsified Hungarian passport. Developments which have left some observers of the bot's blog a little uneasy. If this bot was shipping to the U.S., asks Forbes contributor and University of Washington law professor contributor Ryan Kahlo, who would be legally responsible for purchasing the goods, the coders or the bot itself? How do you hold a robot liable, criminally liable? So I want to make a distinction here because the author of the article is being a little uh, imprecise with his language. It's not a robot. It's not a physical object that's that's doing anything. It's it is a bot. He uses the terms a little bit interchangeably, but a bot is like a a word for a, a term for a, a program that goes out and accomplishes a task, but it doesn't exist in space. Okay, so, so this is this is a bot. There's no. It's a computer program, Mine right? Drone. And I think you know just from my first reading of this, it's pretty clear that whoever writes the code for a bot and then sets that in action is the one who would be responsible. For yes. That. But let's just continue along with the article. He uh, continues, In the U.S., Kalo ponders, criminal law is statutory, meaning that the wording of the law itself would have to be taken into consideration. Certainly. So it's, not, it's not just as simple as like, oh, well, we see the, <laughs> that logically the people are responsible. You get mired in all of these laws. So he says, if, for instance, the law says a person may not knowingly purchase pirated merchandise or drugs, there's an argument that the artists did not violate that law. Right. Whereas if the law says the person may not engage in this behavior recklessly, then the artists may be well found guilty since they released the bot into an environment where they could substantially uh, they could be substantially certain an unlawful outcome would occur. Right. And that that's certainly in some ways reckless to create this program that says do a random thing and then the program does a random thing and well it winds up that there's a law that says you can't do that well we didn't know that he was going to do that yeah but you knew he was going to do something random and the possibility that the random act is illegal you know because there are so many laws you know if i just decided to you know walk down the street then there are probably several laws that I violated just by walking down the street. Like, you know, I didn't leave enough distance between me and the road or whatever. You went out past curfew. I don't have a curfew. <laughs> Catch this. The coders, whose names I just can't pronounce, they're Swiss, say that they are assuming full responsibility for the bot's actions and for the illegal contraband, even though this gallery is ironically located... Next door to a police station. Interesting. Wow. We are the legal owner of the drugs. We are responsible for everything the bot does as we executed the code, uh, one of the coders told the Guardian. But our lawyer and the Swiss Constitution says art in the public interest is allowed to be free. Interesting. I think this is awesome. And so I do see, I. Yeah. I want to see more bots making straw purchases you know like uh hey i think i'd like some cannabis uh here you go bot go find me some on the dark web and here's some money and to, don't tell me how you acquired it you know like <laughs> just make it land on my doorstep wouldn't that be nice that would but then if you program the bot to only purchase cannabis then it could be argued that you knowingly uh right so uh, I suppose I would have to do a careful reading of the laws, and this is all, you know, speculation anyway. Right. But this is going to happen. I mean, it already is happening. There are coders who have produced a bot that is acquiring illegal substances and del and having them delivered. So what what is the world to do about this? Is this even a problem? Right. And what's interesting is in Switzerland, this isn't a problem. Right. But in the United States. Depending on where you live in the United States, it's either a minor problem 
not a problem if you live in Colorado, Washington, Alaska. Right. There are some places where it's or okay. you know it's going to be a very big problem, and you're going to go away into a jail for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, but I would think it would be hard to prove who executed code. Like, can you know you you hit the run button that your fingerprint isn't associated with that? Right. But, you know, because, like you said, the uh, wording of the statutes varies from knowingly to you shall not engage, and then it lands on your doorstep, you pick up the package, you are now in possession. Oh, see, that's very bad, because then this could be like the equivalent of swatting. You could send drugs to your neighbor's house and then be like, oh, look, they got that package, run over and grab it. But then you have no uh, no danger or responsibility in that. I, this could be very bad. I, it, it could I, be very bad. We should just get bad. rid of those drug laws. That, 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 would make, that would make sense. Is there more to this article? No. Okay, so we will talk about why buying local is bad economics when we come back on Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of 
kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have the Skype. So if you have the Skype, you can Skype in username lrn.fm. You will need to send a contact request first, and that will get approved uh, as soon as I wind up getting a chance after you send it. And then you can call in after that has been approved. We do have a call on the line. Keith, we'll get to you in just a second. But... First, I need to make sure that I tell you about freedomsphoenix.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies, that's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided with the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute up to the minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for the free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com, freedoms with an S, phoenix.com. Keith calling in from Montrose, Colorado, listening online to lrn.fm. And Keith, you want to talk about communicating with Congress? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Are oh, you I, I've tried to many do times. Less of it. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to say I'll ever call in, email, write, or actually visit a congressman's office again. Uh, my experiences have been such that, in disregard to the partisan politics, I have not found a congressman that is willing to listen to the majority of his constituents. Yeah, you know, they get elected to office and. They have their agenda before they even start. Right. So what happens then? I mean, calling, emailing, like the, the gun case here in Colorado, two-thirds of their constituents called in and said, don't do this. You don't need to do this. You know, there, there are some things that we could change, but this is not one of them. They didn't listen. Three of the state senators were recalled that year, but they still didn't listen. They still kept going through the same policies, the same tyrannical type of government that we've seen in the past. And yeah, I don't know if there's a way to change it. I, they just, you know, you write, call, email, knock on doors. I don't really think you're going to get much done. You know, they they, have the why why, they have why do you their, think that is? Well, like I said, they had their agendas in the first place. They say, okay, well, I want to get this done. Irregardless of what my constituents say, you know, it's like, they will pander for your vote one day, and as soon as they're elected, well, your vote doesn't really count anymore. We're already elected, so let's just keep doing what we're going to do. And then six months before the election cycle, we'll, we'll – oh, well, you know, I really tried to help you guys out. Look what I did. Here, I can tout this one nonprofit program, or I can tout that, oh, I helped save whatever corporation one time in one event when they did 50 or 100 of the things that trampled on our liberty. You yeah. Know, like I said, they have their own ideas. They have their own agendas. They have their own lobbyists. And I guess the question is, how do we, as a people, as a nation, as, as, as free sovereign citizens, not I shouldn't say sovereign citizens, but as free people, how do we turn this around? You know, is it, is it going to be by the ballot? Is it going to be by an exodus of thought process? How do we stop it? And I don't think calling and writing letters is the answer. We've been doing that for, what, 200 years now? And it, right, and anytime time that day. you write a letter, you just you get a generic response back with maybe an autographed picture. Are you calling from no, New I Hampshire? Didn't get that, no, no, he, he's calling, no, from, Colorado. calling from Colorado. Colorado, okay. I, I wish I was in New Hampshire. Yeah, because that's something uh, that I see as as a solution, Keith. Um, you know, I ignore politicians. Uh, it used to be that I followed the news like a junkie and was always concerned about what 
X or Y or Z politician was doing to diminish my freedom. But then I decided uh, I can't focus on them and all the evil they're doing. I got to focus on me and increasing my freedom. And I would suggest you do the same by either moving to New Hampshire or growing your own food. Just become more independent in your own way. I've, I've, we've actually talked about moving to New Hampshire, um, but the majority of our family is in Colorado, and we're actually cutting ties with a lot of our family members because mm. it's just not the same thought process. And we're actually raising uh, rabbits, quail, growing our own food. We've got four wow. acres. We're turning oh, into an that's orchard, fantastic. permaculture style, wow. uh, off-grid uh, shop that's our business, battery yeah. backup system, solar heat. And yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're 100% on the self-sustainability and uh, self-sufficiency bandwagon. Well, that sounds great, um, man. There have got to be people in your community can... who could benefit from that, that you could connect with. You know, I'm sorry that things aren't working out with you and your fam, uh, but it sounds like you're yeah, really yeah, building you know. a foundation there. So moving to New Hampshire might not be within the realm of possibility for you. Well, we found Welcome Home Montrose down here. Um, they help veterans. And so this next year, and I'm a disabled veteran, a combat veteran, and this year we're actually growing turkey specifically for homeless, disabled, and disadvantaged veterans. Isn't that nice? Uh, just to give to them. So, you know, I mean, we can do great things. I just, the long-term big picture, even, you know, no matter what state we're in, I just, the federal oversight kind of scares me. Why? You know, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't even think, well, because it's not necessarily that I think that they're going to come take my guns. I, I'm more concerned that they're going to keep passing laws like I cannot sell a chicken to my neighbor. Right. Because I didn't process it in a USDA inspected facility. I can't sell my quail eggs to restaurants. Yep. I can't sell my quail to restaurants. You know. Are you familiar with the Farm That's to Consumer Legal Defense Fund? I'm not. I am extremely familiar with them. And okay, Bill, yeah. Bill Salton, and I'm a yeah, huge yeah. fan. You know. I mean, that's the that's solution. Them, but... Independent people coming together, solving these problems. When one farmer gets attacked, there are farmers and lawyers from all over the country who say, no, you won't. You won't tell this farmer he's going to jail for selling a chicken or selling raw milk to his neighbors. You know, And so I, I am encouraged by people like you who are living independently, growing, raising these turkeys, raising food for your community. I mean, you're the solution. You're asking us. <laughs> like, you're, you're already doing being it. the example. <laughs> so, Keith, well, let, let me you know, I try to be, and I do a, a, this goofy little YouTube show. But, you know, and the thing is, is, when I started doing that show, I had more and more and more people come to me and say, hey, we're trying to do this. Where do we start? I, you know, the first thing I tell them is just, Stay calm. <laughs> Just stay calm. I know it's yeah. first exposure, it's pain in the pain in the keister, but stay calm. Take it day by day. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Great you advice. Know, and, and just remember to keep your head. What's your Always YouTube keep channel? Your head. Uh, it's uh, Ray's Corner. It's a uh, channel. It's called SG Prepared. It's a goofy little thing. I go on there. They're, I'm not going to say they're violent rants, but they're, you know, combat veteran army style rants. <laughs> but, yeah, and so I just tell people, I say, look, think for yourself. Just think for yourself. Just, okay, look at one side, look at the other, look at the other side again. And then realize there's probably 50 sides to whatever problem or solution that you see than just the two that we're told about, irregardless of politics. I'm, I'm a political agnostic at this point. But, you know, we, we've lost that, that Americanness to us. When I watched the movie Fury yesterday, I realized that, you know, stories like this, they're, they're commonplace in the military. I don't know what but the story is. From American. Uh, long story short, very few Americans take on very many em enemy soldiers. And you can find those stories from Vietnam to World War II to World War One to the yeah. current war. And it's, you know, we talk about tactics and weapons. But the thing is, is the tankers were outgunned in World War II. And, you know, and in Vietnam, you'd have 300 to a battalion firing almost the same weapon with a smaller caliber versus 2,000 of the, the enemy troops. And they still held on. You see guys that were shot nine times that still held, uh, took their battle buddy to the chopper. I don't think it's I – th I think we need to bring that essence of who we are back. Kind of like when uh, the first war between uh, the French and the Indians versus British and American troops, we first saw that disconnect between us and the British. We said, wait a minute, we're, we're our own culture. We're totally different from you. And – that, that kind of birth of the American mindset, I think, is what we're lacking today. Now, we're so worried Keith, about everything it, else. It seems, to me, here? it seems to me that you're uh, saying that, like, the American culture is all about war. 
Now, am I no, completely no, mishearing just... what you're saying? Because you, you talked about no, uh, World War II. No, Vietnam. he talks. He's talking about courage. He's talking about facing an enemy that's greater than yourself. Because in America, we've since we started this country, and since we even started the mindset of being American in, in general, we've had to fight for everything we had, not just another country, but for the elements for, through the you know cutting down. Oh, I not think cutting down trees is a good thing, but. We had to fight cougars. We had to fight buffalo. We had to fight the weather. You know, we had to fight everything tooth and nail. Keith, thanks for the call. Times are different than they were when Geico started saving people money over 75 years ago. Everybody takes photos of their food nowadays. You can bet none of us kids would snap pictures of mom's tuna casserole surprise. To this day, we don't know what the surprise was, nor do we want to. We didn't always have tasty food, but we always had great car insurance with GEICO. GEICO, saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. If you're looking for work, it's a process of elimination, and you're trying not to be eliminated. So here's a tip for making the cut, and this might seem subtle, but to the person interviewing you, it's not. There is a world of difference between applicants who convey, I need a job, and those who simply ooze, I want a to work, especially in these lean times when many you're competing with will seem desperate in I'll take anything mode. If you convey specific interest in this job at this company, you will be conspicuous. Thus, the value of going to school on the company you're applying to before the interview. With money and attention so tight now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. 
You can call in with your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And I have a story about why buy local is really bad economics. Okay. And I'm sure that this will rustle some jimmies a it's little gonna bit. It's going to make people upset. They, Certainly. Actually, in my experience, the buy local thing, it isn't about uh, an economic argument, right? It's about um, helping out your your friends and neighbors. You want to support your your community. Well, there, there are some people that do make an economic argument okay. out of buy local. So let's hear it. So the story from realclearmarkets.com Coca-Cola's Share a Coke campaign is the latest effort by a multinational company to de-emphasize their global reach by replacing the logo on its cans with colloquialisms and common names in markets it serves. One of the world's most recognizable brands is hoping to look and feel a bit more local. Coke's marketing strategy is just one example of companies responding to growing public sentiment that buying local is synonymous with doing good. And somehow I hit something on my computer and the article went completely away. So give me just a second here. People think that they're doing something good because they see mom and pop shops and they're like, if I pay... $20 $20 for this trinket that costs 5 down the street at the big box store. Well, I'm putting more money into mom and pop's pocket, so I'm doing a good thing. Therefore, good for the economy is what a lot of people think. Sure, yeah. Uh, so the article here continues. It says, indeed, more than 150 groups representing more than 30,000 U.S. businesses are promoting buy local campaigns with slogans like, don't buy from strangers, buy from neighbors. Of course, suspicion of foreign goods is nothing new. Phrases like made in China have long been associated with poor quality. But when did shunning foreign-made products become a matter of conscience? The truth is, the growth of international trade over the past 30 years has sparked a revolution in living standards for hundreds of millions of people around the world. Stigmatizing global trade threatens to undo hard-won, hard-won gains. History and research show that trade, as trade increases, poverty decreases, and China is a prime example. Since 1978, when the country opened to foreign investment, China has grown to become the world's largest trader measured by total imports and exports. The results have been striking. In 2012 alone, average factory wages in China rose 14%. In manufacturing specifically, worker wages have increased by 71% since 2008. Over the last 30 years, Chinese families living in extreme poverty dropped from 84% to under 10%. Whoa. That I did not know. That's a huge drop in poverty. Huge drop. Yes. So to put that in perspective, 680 million Chinese, that's over twice the entire population of the United States, are no longer living on the edge of catastrophe and dying from preventable problems like diarrhea and malnutrition. Wow, thank goodness. And China is just one example. A study by Yale University and the Brookings Institute finds that in just 30 years from 1981 to 2011, the world's population living below the extreme poverty line plummeted from 52% down to 15%. The study credits the rise of globalization and free markets as primary drivers of the decline in poverty, noting that countries that have displayed the greatest success have been most engaged with the global economy. The stress many Americans feel about buying products made abroad is rooted in bad economics, and we're not the first generation to make this mistake. Prior to the late 18th century, 
most Western economies believed that one country's economic gains had to be another's loss. Trade was not viewed as mutually beneficial to the seller and the buyer, though they gained economic power by encouraging exports and discouraging imports. Why was that? Is that because, like, Adam Smith and, like, modern economics hadn't yet been invented? They just... They were too early to, to figure that out, that one country's gain doesn't have to be another country's loss? Uh, I, I don't know exactly why they thought that, but it probably comes from, you know... Because in, a lot of life is things, a zero-sum game. If one person game. wins, yeah. somebody else loses. Yeah, but in economics, there actually can be a win-win. Right. Where both people are enriched by trade. Right. So the article here continues. It says, today... Champions of the buy local movement often follow the same faulty economic reasonings. Nobody wins unless somebody loses, and I'd rather have the person who looks like me, lives near me, and talks like me win, so I'm going to buy from him. What's sad about this line of thinking isn't just that it draws arbitrary moral distinctions between humans based on physical traits and locations. But it undermines the openness to trade and commercial interactions that has had so many has made so many people better off. Complaints that overseas workers are stealing jobs are short sighted and unfair. Why is someone less deserving of work simply because he's willing to do it for two dollars an hour instead of twenty? Why does it matter? Because well, because some people would say, well, he's hurting mom and pop store. You know, by undercutting them, he's driving them out of business and uh, encouraging people not to send their money to mom and pop. We want mom and pop to get the money. We want to support the community. Right. So maybe mom and pop should create a product that could actually compete. Well, that just sounds Maybe harsh. mom and pop should create just a, you know, a service that people capitalist. actually want. Yeah, okay. You mm -hmm. sound heartless. I'm not heartless. Okay. Not at all. Why does it matter if his name is Jin instead of Jim? Is it, or rather, is the humanity of a worker in Beijing of less worth than the humanity of a worker in Cleveland? To be sure that there is nothing wrong with buy local, indeed, there is something beautiful about watching a local craftsman labor over furniture or a farmer harvesting crops but there is simply no reason to stress when the furniture in your home or the food on your plate had to travel across a border to reach you. In fact, if we think about the conditions of the foreign strangers who made the furniture or grow or who had grown the food and what it means to him to have the chance to do business with us, we ought to find plenty of reason to celebrate. Trade opens up opportunities to pursue a fulfilling, honest living and raises people out of poverty, and that should give us all a little peace of mind. Well, when you think about it, think of coffee. I mean, isn't the majority of coffee grown outside of the U.S.? Yes. So there, it, there's only one state in the U.S. where you can actually grow coffee, and that's Hawaii. Right, because of the uh, subtropical climate. Yes. And so you... you you know, how many coffee drinkers are there in the world? And we unfortunately have to import our coffee. I mean, are we, are we not going to give the the coffee growers jobs? Or are we not going to be able to enjoy well, our coffee? Well, coffee's different. Sure. Because I can't grow coffee where I live. So, you know, it's okay to import coffee. But, you know, chocolates and well, cars. Well, why, why don't you just buy coffee from Hawaii and then still keep it in the United States? Well, because Hawaii is not big enough to make enough coffee for everybody in America. Okay. I, you know, I'm just saying that you know, coffee is an example of just something that we still have to... Uh, we can't just keep everything local. We can't keep right. everything in the United and, States. You know, Depending on how far you want to take this buy local thing, are, are you only going to buy from people within your state? Within your county, within your city, within your town, you know how, how far do you take it? And for people that live in, say, Keene, New Hampshire, that's 15 miles from the Vermont border, then are you going to exclude ever going into Vermont 
to do business with somebody from the seacoast that's two and a half hours away. Or come into New Hampshire. Because, you know, they're part of your quote-unquote community because they happen to be within some arbitrary border that has been set up. Sure. We'll talk about this more in Hour 3 coming up after the news. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, right? worms in the transaction comments and i'll send you something weird are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like then this free ebook may save your life rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches informers informants agents provocateur narcs finks and similar vermin rats was written by og libertarian claire wolf Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 2nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,170 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $315. Antiwar.com reports, following an emergency meeting of his cabinet, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed confidence that the International Criminal Court would reject the Palestinian application for membership out of hand since the Palestinian Authority is not a state. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas acceded to the Rome Statute on December 31st, effective 90 days from his signature. There's been no indication out of the ICC that they intend to reject the Palestinian application. The Israeli argument that the Palestinian Authority is not a state is also a questionable supposition as the Palestinian Authority is broadly recognized as a provisional government and the UN General Assembly has granted Palestine the status of a non-member observer state. The United States has also made it clear that they strongly oppose Palestinian membership in the ICC, though whether the ICC is taking US and Israeli objections seriously is unclear since after all both nations have signed the Rome Statute but never ratified it and both refused to allow ICC jurisdiction over them. Abbas pushed ICC membership after failing to get a UN Security Council approval for an end to the Israeli occupation by 2017. The US vetoed that resolution at the behest of Israel. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports, the lawyer for jailed Al Jazeera journalist Peter Gresty has formally applied to the Egyptian government for the Australians' deportation after Egypt's highest court ordered a retrial for Gresty and two colleagues. 
Last year, Gresti, Canadian Egyptian Mohamed Fami, and Egyptian national Bahir Mohamed were sentenced to seven to ten years on charges including spreading lies and helping a terrorist organization, a reference to the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood. The High Court in Cairo ordered the retrial on Thursday on the grounds of procedural flaws in the trial. The original trial had been condemned by human rights groups and Western governments and prompted the United Nations to question Egypt's judicial independence. The imprisonment of the reporters has been a thorny issue for Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as he seeks to prove his commitment to democratic reforms. Defense attorneys said earlier in Cairo that the new proceedings could begin within a month. Despite the widespread criticism of the case, CC has cited the independence of the judiciary. However, he said in November that he would have preferred to have deported Gresti had he been in power when the journalists were arrested in December of 2013. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Associated Press reports a federal judge says that Florida's county court clerks have a legal duty to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, but he stopped short of ordering them to do so. U.S. District Judge Robert Hinkle issued a ruling Thursday in Tallahassee Federal Court responding to requests to clarify his previous order that Florida's same-sex marriage ban was unconstitutional. He stayed that order, but the stay is scheduled to expire at the end of the day on Monday. The association, representing county clerks, said the ruling applies only to Washington County, where a lawsuit filed by two men became a key basis for Hinkle's order. Gay rights groups said Hinkle's order applied statewide. Hinkle warned Thursday that clerks who don't start issuing the licenses when the stay expires could face future lawsuits or other legal consequences. Hinkle said while his order does not require a clerk to issue a marriage license to a same-sex couple, the Constitution requires the clerk to issue such licenses. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A harrowing situation on Broad Street came to its conclusion Thursday night as a group of hostages were freed from local comedy club The Laugh Up Lounge after a tense seven-minute stand-up set. Every once in a while he'd grab his notebook and I'd think maybe this is it. Maybe he's going to let us go, but he just kept talking. Additionally, The Onion recovered this video footage from the cell phone of one of the many captives. Please, if someone sees this, help us. Please help yeah, us. micromanagement. Yeah. Totally gonna wang it out. Oh my god! Oh my god! No. Cool. Uh, I'm not a religious person, but uh, at one point I said the Lord's Prayer, and it, it actually had a calming effect. Like Jesus was standing next to me and said, "You're gonna get through this." I mean, sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, uh, don't take life for granted because uh, you just never know when something like this could happen. So. This is the Onion News Network. Kicking off our number three of Free Talk Live. You can call in with your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And we have been pretty much all over the place tonight. Started off with 10 Bitcoin resolutions for 2015. Then we had a guy from North Carolina that called in with what he called a resolution for Congress, where he wanted Congress to stay in their home districts and then be able to telecommute into D.C., presumably so that they would be able to, you know, actually mingle with their constituents and find out, you know, what the constituents want them to do. And somehow that that would limit the influence of lobbyists. 
Uh, we also talked about why clickbait is horrible, criminal robots, and why buy local is bad economics. And we go to you and your calls. Abel from New Hampshire is on Skype. Abel, what's on your mind? Howdy. Well, uh, the idea that uh, trade is uh, somehow better than uh, at a distance than local, I think is, uh, you know, there's some evidence that that's uh, a, a, a true. But the fact is, is that it, it's really, really complicated. And, uh, you know, there's always an expense involved in transport. Certainly. If, it, if it's a physical, um, you know, commodity or, or item. So, so right off the bat, there should be a, uh, an incentive to not have to ship as far. It's, it's certainly better for the amount of time it takes to, uh, actually uh, uh, receive right. so, whatever product so for things you're trying like to get. Food, it would make sense to buy you know more local food because then it's fresher. Right. But you you do admit that you know there are some things that can't be produced locally. And you're in New Hampshire. Uh, you cannot grow coffee in New Hampshire. Well, the climate I, well, just does not allow for that. Uh, well, there, there are certain fruits that you can't uh, grow I, because the climate agreed, doesn't I, allow. Agreed. Uh, and, and we're actually making lots of progress. Uh, as a matter of fact, the technology will solve all those problems. Uh, do you agree? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure what you mean by technology would solve those problems. Uh, well, the problems you just mentioned of, of having, uh, uh, you know, items that, are not easily grown. If you mean that technology locally. will allow people to have better greenhouses so that certain products could be grown, yeah, possibly, but I don't think that, you know, all of the coffee that is consumed in New Hampshire will ever only be grown in New Hampshire. I don't think that technology can make that happen. Of course not, and I never would actually encourage anything like that. I mean, I think that trade is fabulous uh, and I'm not, not discounting it at all. I'm just saying that many of the factors that make trade a less expensive has to do with, uh, you know, the, you know, China has you know, been huge and uh, in their increase in trade in the last few decades. And, and almost all of that is a, you know, comparison between the Western world and and China in in uh, regulation, there's like basically nothing in in China, and I'm 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 actually thinking that I'd like it to go more towards nothing in the U.S. as well. Uh, but, Certainly, but, you know, but I don't think that the labor you know. unions would ever allow that to happen in the United States. Well, it, it doesn't matter what the labor unions want. The fact is, is that 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 trade exists. And uh, and there are no effective labor unions in China, and uh, and and you know that that will mean that the that the that the market for union labor in the U.S. is 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 going to shrink to nothing if they don't change their ways. Uh, I mean, do you disagree with that? Well, as long as. Congress and the federal government don't get involved to, you know, do another one of these bailouts like what they did with General Motors back in 08 to quote unquote save the automotive industry so that they can yeah. pay people $28 an hour to not do anything because there's not enough demand for the vehicles that they're making. Well, yeah, I mean I came from the auto industry, Daryl. You, you can't uh you you can't you know, get me on that one. Uh, the it, it, the idea that uh, that there's no unintended consequences to the the economic uh, impact of 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 uh, the wrecking ball nature of of bailouts and what have you uh, over time. I mean, I I I I'm just flabbergasted that they've been able to put off uh, a, you know a an economic. Uh, 
collapse uh, as long as they have since uh, this uh, uh, earlier in the, you know, the 08 collapse. I, you know, to have 95, 90 to 95 percent of the people calling in and asking their Congress people to not do a bailout and then have them going ahead and doing it uh, is, is, you know, was just proof positive that, uh, that uh, you know, that uh, the United States government is uh, is a dead letter, and and it's only just kind of, it's so it's so humongous, and 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 have so much momentum that it's going to take a while for it to peter out. But it is dead, and uh, uh, you know, and, and and the people, you know, all all they need to do is kind of wake up and see that that's what's going on. But I, you know, the fact is, is that I think what'll happen is that the that you know, all these issues will settle out and there will be, uh, you know, a modicum of trade, you know, between the things and everybody will benefit from that. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, the, the, the actual transport of uh, the materials will become uh, more of a, a critical issue in, in, in trade. And, and, and innovation has to come in so that innovators in different parts of the world come up with new products that, that produce, you know, greater potential for enjoyment and, uh, uh, and productivity and what have you. And that will, that will fuel trade in itself. And, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't know where IP is going to fit into this. If we, if we kind of eliminate IP as an issue, then you know reverse engineering will probably take away a lot of the need for um, moving stuff around well let, let me ask this hypothetical question because sure. it, it, it's not really that much of a hypothetical uh because we are seeing that 3d printers are becoming a lot cheaper and you can actually go you know there there's uh big box stores where you can buy a 3d printer so let's just say in 15 years when the average American household has a 3D printer and people are able to 3D print a lot of the goods that they would otherwise go to, say, Walmart to purchase, what's going to happen to the global economy when that happens? When people can just, oh, I broke a plate, I'm going to 3D print one. I Well, I think that uh, that's going to be a huge impact. Uh, I... I I kind of expect it to go a little bit more slowly because it it's really more complicated than uh you know just spitting out cuz cuz you have to spit out the right stuff in a in a 3D printing situation it has to be whatever the material is that works in the given uh application for strength and uh, uh reliability and all the different factors that are involved but what would and, not what would not being able to 3d print most regular household products be the ultimate buy local abel thanks for the call your call is welcome 855 450 free this is free talk live So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. 
With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. It hasn't been unheard of for the police to insert an instigator. These are things they do, believe it or not. They'll have a plainclothes officer go into the protest and act as though he's one of the protesters, and then the plainclothes officer will start something with another one of the police. Oh, come right. on. This sounds like a conspiracy theory now. This is not a conspiracy theory. These are confirmed occurrences. Let's give the cops a benefit of the doubt and say it really was some instigator starting stuff with the cops. Does that mean that it's appropriate to flush every single person out of the park with rubber bullets, tear gas, and other sorts of uh, offensive devices? Doesn't seem like it to me. Would it make yeah. more sense to stop the person who's instigating to, you know, put a stop to those specific individuals. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450, free, that's 855 450-3733, Four five zero three seven three three. Your calls are welcome, and we've got a call on Skype that we will get to in just a moment. But first, if you value your online privacy, you need ProXPN. What is ProXPN? ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. How does that make you feel? Without ProXPN, everything you do online is available for review. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or even Linux, though the setup is a little different for Linux. Then just connect to the internet and you're protected from all of that. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all of your devices simultaneously. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50 and you'll get 50% off an annual account. That's almost $5 a month. Though FTL50 will get you a savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. With the premium account... You will get unlimited bandwidth with servers all around the world to access, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN does not keep a record of your online habits at all. 
You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use promo code FTL50, and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Going to Skype, we have Jim calling in. And Jim, you want to talk about Stefan Molyneux. Well, yeah, uh, you guys were talking about um, undercutting uh, workers and how that's bad and everything. Uh, now, I know Derek J posted a blog post, and I was kind of or kind of listening to the audio in between the commercials, and I just want to make sure I got the gist of this right. Um, you're saying that because Stefan Molyneux made this error and he uh, he's he said some really silly things that we shouldn't discredit him as a philosopher. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm saying that he has made a mistake. Uh, he made a, a factual, like a philosophical error in, in speaking that he was wrong. I agreed with the, the hosts of Free Talk Live and their assessment that he was wrong about what he was saying, but that uh, he, he still produces incredible value, at least for me, uh, informationally and philosophically. Well, I know his older videos are really good, like um, the end of the Statism is Dead series, uh, there's a couple of good. There's a couple good series on there. There's a good. There's a good collection of really great videos and his earlier stuff. But later, I haven't been seeing any of that. Um, there, the truth about um, Trayvon Martin was fairly decent, but then he just went right back into parental uh, or peaceful parenting, and he uses that almost like a bait and switch. So it's like, oh, I'm, come on in, we're going to talk about Tray, uh, Trayvon Martin. Oh, by the way, don't spank your kids. Which, right. Which I, I agree with, but it's it's like it's getting old after a while. And I was wondering, uh, what philosophical concepts is he responsible for that you agree with still? Oh, uh, well, the end of statism. In my mind, you know, I've been following him since probably 2009, uh, 2010, and that was the beginning of my transition uh, to become an anarchist. So it was hearing these philosophical principles of self-ownership for the first time uh, explained in a way that I thought was eloquent um, that really had a lasting impact on me. Yeah, and he's, and his older videos are great. Um, they were really pivotal, pivotal in my transition uh, to becoming an anarchist too. Yeah, uh, I still so- I'm subscribed to his channel and I watch those um, the videos that he puts out recently. And I agree with you, Jim, that it gets kind of annoying that his his um, ploy has been pretty much to say I'm gonna pitch people with clickbait talking about the most relevant news topic, and then I'm going to talk about peaceful parenting. And this was something I sort of got into yesterday with Ian when he was hosting Free Talk Live. Is like. He's got a different strategy for the way he wants to live his life and advance freedom. And it's different from what we have here at Free Talk Live, where we're willing to live the ideas of liberty. He's not, you know, and so he has to sort of limit what he can say. And I think it makes him come off as a status sometimes. Yeah, and when he's saying things like you should always submit to the to the uh, government, you should always do this. You shouldn't uh, engage in self defense. You should just try to avoid it and uh, try to get other people to be m- more peaceful. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it's, I it's mean, troubling it, to hear those things. Yeah, for me as well. I'm sure it's troubling for you. I mean, yeah, I mean, like the the guy's pretty well off. I mean, his wife makes a good penny. I mean, he's sitting on what like two hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin. Yeah, but he's probably and, terrified of the state, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I mean, what, you don't he, think he is? Very, well, I'm I'm pretty sure he, he probably has some fear. But I mean, he lives pretty much a sheltered life when it comes to uh, uh, private crime. Uh, <laughs> he, I, I think mean, he expects that any day someone's going to knock on his door and say, "You're going to federal prison for the rest of your life." For what? I don't know. It could, yeah, be, for, it could know. be for sedition. It could be for anything. I mean, for someone speaking out against the state, they'll find anything. It could be, you know, he didn't pay his taxes in 2001 or something. It, it could be anything. That's that's possible, but um, the but I'm talking about uh, private crime, uh, not not a government crime. Oh. Um, was, I mean, like if if you're in a lower income area, you're going to be more subject to things like you know, robberies, carjackings, home invasions, that sort of thing, than you are if you're in a gated community somewhere in, you know, affluent uh, Ottawa, Canada. I follow. What, what does that have to do with Stefan? Uh, well, he, he preaches that no one should practice self-defense. No one should uh, get training in martial arts. No one should have a gun. Not that you should, yeah, that isn't you should be that banned. Isn't that ridiculous? 
not that they should be banned, but that you shouldn't do it at all. And the only the best way to deal with it is just to submit to your pressures, whether they're government or private, and uh, move, get along with your day. And I could not possibly disagree more. Why? Um, because self-defense is important. If people are an armed, an armed society is a polite society. If people are armed, people are not going to be uh, willing to um, go after just a random Joe on the street. They're probably not going to bust into people's houses because they don't know who's armed. But if no one is, then you're just increasing the uh, you're uh, you're decreasing the risk and increasing the chances of uh, further crime, not just for you but for other people around you. It has a uh, has a um, a negative externality. I agree with you, Jim. And I bet that Stefan would secretly agree with you. I'm speculating, obviously, but I think that he's t- he's put himself into a, a corner where mm-hmm. his, his fame has gotten to a point where he's got so many followers, he wants to keep them. He'll turn people off if he's completely philosophically consistent. So he just drums on about peaceful parenting and then stays a statist about the rest of the stuff. What do you think about my theory? Uh, that sounds about right, but I think in the end, this particular comment when he's talking about the Eric, Eric Gardner Lucy cigarette thing, yeah. I think that's more of a way to be consistent with his defense against uh, his DMCA uh, abuse with uh, True Sheeps. Okay, and just to catch listeners up to speed, we have to we have to give some background here that Stefan uh, produces videos. He recently said that Eric Gardner, the man who was choked to death by the NYPD, caused a victim by selling his loose cigarettes. Interesting. We'll we'll talk about that a little bit more, as well as the uh, copyright claim Mm -hmm. that he filed when we come back on Mm -hmm. Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five Five hundred thousand dollars and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain five hundred thousand dollars of coverage for as little as one hundred and fifteen dollars a month. And this rate is fixed for the next twenty years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And back to the Skype where Jim is on the line. Jim and Derek have been explaining a good bit about Stefan Molyneux to me. Uh, I... I'm not someone who listens to Stefan Molyneux's three-hour-long podcast that he puts out. And apparently he said some things about Eric Garner recently. Yeah. So tell us what he said about Eric Garner. Well, it was my understanding, and uh, just to reiterate, that I believe he misspoke or was factually just incorrect when he said that Uh, Eric Garner, the man who was choked to death by the NYPD for selling loose cigarettes, caused a victim by his selling of loose cigarettes. And and the victim, uh, Stefan claimed, were all the people who'd pay the taxes um, for cigarettes. Is that a, am I correct in that recap, Jim? That sounds, yeah, that sounds about right. He was creating victims. Yeah. And not just, and not just creating any victims, not just a, because I was saying on Free Talk Live, you know, I think he misspoke and should have said that the, it was a property rights issue. It's not a tax issue. It's like, hey, you're on my property. You're selling stuff. I want you gone. You're basically Jay and Silent Bob. And this guy has been arrested for selling cigarettes in front of businesses apparently dozens of times. So it seems like he's a nuisance. Just get rid of him. Yeah, but he isn't. He, isn't he on the uh, government sidewalks? Isn't he uh, just as just as entitled to walk around on those streets as anybody else? Uh, I guess. I would argue that in a free society, the business owner would own the property mm-hmm. in front of his business. So you know, I don't see that as a legitimate argument in in, in my world. Right, but we we live in this world, and that's not the case. What the case is now is that he was standing on public property. "Quote yeah. unquote government yeah. property." Actually, but I don't. And, yeah, uh, I don't buy that. There's such a thing as public property. It's government property. Right. Exactly. But in this paradigm, you know, they have every "quote unquote" right to it that we do. It's just sickening to talk like that. But that's why it's um, so messy. It's so hard to speculate about this because we've all got like this different version of the world. Like, okay, the property owners and uh, the police. Everyone's operating under a different set of principles here. So yeah, but to, in a free society, we wouldn't be pay, those store owners wouldn't be paying taxes, so here, here. we wouldn't have this problem. So yeah. to claim that you know he victimized someone because he was not paying a certain tax, it sounds very similar to that Supreme Court ruling that if you grow your own grain, you are interfering with interstate commerce. Because you're yeah. not buying grain yeah. that was grown in you know some flyover state. Yeah, it's insane. So why should we care, Jim? Well, because this is all kind of linked into what his defense of uh, the True Shibes thing. Uh, True Shibes was a YouTuber who was taking, I guess, Lucy's of his, his uh, three-hour-long videos, cutting out the parts that are really just outrageous or just wacky, and posting them up. And it was in a BuzzFeed article that was getting a lot of attention, and apparently he got upset about it and filed some uh, false Digital Millennium Copyright Act claims against him, which is using the state guns to stop 
them from using his quote unquote intellectual property that he doesn't believe in. Yeah, that's um, despicable. That that was his first reaction. I mean, where where does that come from? Uh, was he uh, perhaps uh, I don't know abused as a child? Well, <laughs> we, <laughs> apparently that's not where I was going. But I was thinking, you know, was he a hardcore statist when he worked in the world of technology before he became an anarchist or uh, like a philosophical anarchist? Because maybe it was just his trigger reaction to be like, oh no, I'm being attacked. I have to use the state in the only way I know how. Well, from what I understand, when he first started his uh, videos, he was dr commuting to and from his uh, software jobs in his car talking about anarchy. So uh, probably not. OK. Um, but he so is why using, should we care? Maybe because he's he's uh, he's not very philosophically consistent. This is an ethicist who say who says that anybody who does any ethicist, excuse me, that doesn't follow their own ethics, you don't need any other arguments to discredit his ethics. Yeah, and it's it's against UPB to use the state to silence criticism, and therefore we, that's all we need, according to Stefan Molyneux. Hold on, to what, what's UBP? Okay, U UPP, there's so many cult jargons. The UPB is a universally preferable behavior, which is his grand unified ethical theory that's supposed to prove objective morality, secular uh, objective morality. And it's just basically a rehashing of Kant's um, uh, argument from detontology or whatever, uh, basically saying that, uh, you know, if it's, if you can't, if everybody can't do it at the same time, or if two people can't do it in the same room, then, you know, then it's uh, ethically uh, bad, or if it doesn't follow the NAP, then it's bad, mm -hmm. um, and it's objectively true. And there's some other problems with it, but he also has wrote this long uh, ethical article that says that any uh, ethicist that violates his own ethics, um, you can just disregard his ethics outright. And that was his defense against making the videos about Marx, um, Nelson Mandela, and stuff like that. You know, while it's true these guys were hypocrites, um, that doesn't really negate the the arguments that he's making. But according to him, that's not an uh, ad hominem. I mean, there's other reasons for attacking those things. So, there's are you really calling in to call those. Molyneux a hypocrite? Um, is that your point? No. Well, the the main point is I just wanted to kind of clarify what you were saying uh, yesterday. And I really wanted to know uh, what he, because you said that he was a good philosopher, but I want to know like what good philosophy has he c come up with himself? Because the only thing that I've hear heard so far was either stuff that it's been good stuff, but that's been rehashed and rebranded to make it seem like it's coming from him, yeah, or really bad stuff that uh, that he is solely uh, responsible for. That um. Yeah, well, like, what's he done so for me lately is, is a good question to ask. Yeah. You know, he's an entertainer for me. Like, I'm still subscribed to his channel because I enjoy hearing uh, random people call in from around the world and then uh, talk about the problems that they have in their lives with relationships and how that relates to their upbringing. I find that sort of thing valuable because I can reflect on my own life and, and glean a little bit from it. You know, I can't say specifically uh, what philosophical enlightening things, you know, he's he's changed in my world forever. Not at the drop of the hat. But I think it's the exercise in thinking critically, in a analyzing a situation and starting from first principles. You know, just getting exercise in that. Just hearing those conversations is beneficial to me. Okay, so I'm confused about something. Is he trying to be a philosopher or a therapist? Well, it's interesting. He, he sort of <laughs> blends the two. Yeah, he said that his big influence is uh, uh, he'll, he'll name off philosophers, but he also names off uh, Dr. Phil. And he says he's a huge fan of Dr. Phil. Oh, and boy. I'm just like, oh, man, really? And it's but there would be people who will call into a show and say, like, oh, I want to talk about free market algorithm. And then it just goes straight into, oh, did you know? Did your parents abuse you? Did they spank you? How many times did they spank you? How often did they spank you? Did they spank you regularly? How old until you – and it just keeps going droning on and on and on and on. It's like what does this have to do with agorism? Well, not everyone's trying to you know, just reach a stateless society. Some people just want to work out the problems in their lives, and it's beneficial to look to their history to, right, to work but I've, those out. I've heard him – I mean I've heard him debate zeitgeisters, and the zeitgeist stuff is so easily – you know, 
refuted and he understands the economics behind it and it's just really low hanging fruit to you know like go oh we're not going to talk about the economic calculation problem and show why zeitgeist is wrong you know like tell me about your parents you know like did did they take you to daycare did they abandon you there and you know this is you know did they go to work is that why you're you want this you know <laughs> socialist utopia uh, yeah. to take care of you like a parent and it's like Really, that's what we're going with. That's how we're going to refute these ideas. So for people that aren't familiar with what the zeitgeist oh. thing is, uh, it's sort of this idea of what I called communism with a computer. <laughs> uh, they call it the Venus Project, uh, the resource-based economy to where at some point we'll wind up to where computers can take care of all of our needs and nobody will have to work. And things just magically wind up getting done and, you know, you get whatever you need from a computer, but somehow there's not going to be rationing of supplies and food. It really doesn't make a lot of logical sense. It sounds good as a fairy tale. Jim, thanks for the call. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Might be time for you and your thoughts in the final segment coming up. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. Hey, everyone. I'm having lots of fun with my new Ghost 80% AR-15. This baby shoots like a dream. Hey, thanks, Guns80.com. You know, friends ask me all the time why I wanted a Ghost AR-15. That's easy. You see, my buddy Mark kept telling me that I'd better go to Guns80.com to get myself a Ghost AR-15 before they outlawed them. I thought he was just paranoid, so I ignored him. Well, at first... But then I started hearing government media types talking about making guns illegal, about the president signing on to a U.N. treaty that could take my gun rights away. You know, it really bugged me. So I dug in, I did the research, and I realized that Mark was right all along. I know now that having an unregistered Ghost AR-15 is the right answer. I'm a proud 80% Ghost AR-15 convert. You should be, too. The answer is really simple. Get your Ghost AR-15 at guns80.com. The big sale is on. Right now, go to guns80.com. That's guns80.com. Guns80. The number's 80.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. 855-450 free. There might be time for your call in this last segment. Rose will get to you in just a second. But first, at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee buzz box. It is shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Coffee is a very absorbent crop. This makes the organic certification that much more important. BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something that other coffee producers seem to care nothing for. They have worked with us to set up a program to turn coffee profits into microloans through Kiva.org. Help us change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Get started now by getting your free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. You do have to pay the shipping, but once you get set up with coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can cancel that subscription at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Rose is calling in from Tallahassee, Florida, listening to WVFT. And you want to talk about hoodies. What's on your mind, Rose? Yes, sir. Okay. First of all, why would you walk into a store wearing a hoodie and sunglasses? First of all, that makes it look like you you coming to rob somebody. You see what I'm saying? And why do you have on the hoodie in the store? It's not raining in the store. It's not snowing. The sun is not shining in the store. So why? What if you're cold? Then when something, then when something happens, you want to pour the race cards. Okay, I say stop the madness. Hold, hold, hold Wait a on, minute. Rose. Hold, hold on, Rose. Back back up just a little bit because it seems as though uh, we're missing some context. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, so are you mad about some, someone coming there, into a store? Is there something that happened recently about somebody wearing a hoodie in a store? It is hoodie weather. It's cold out in most in a lot of places. Well, a lot of people wear hoodies down here. You, they got on. They they have on hoodies. They have on sunglasses. They come into the store, and the person behind the counter is looking at them in fear, mm-hmm. like, "Am I going to be robbed?" Yeah. And I'm like, well, why would they come in here wearing hoodies and the glasses? And the and the store owner is in fear for their life, thinking they're going to be robbed. Are you a store owner, Rose? No, I'm not. Have you ever walked into a store and seen a sign posted at the beginning saying, like, no guns or no shirt, no shoes, no service? I've seen signs that says, no shirt, no shoes, no service. I've seen those signs plenty of times, yes. Would you like to go into a business that says, says uh, no service for people wearing hoodies? But I guess for me, I guess I just wouldn't wear a hoodie in the store. Yeah, but it sounds but like as a customer, me. you feel afraid about your fellow customers who are wearing hoodies. Like, are, Aren't you afraid? Them, I, well, yeah, perhaps so. Perhaps so, but you don't know if you're going to be robbed or whatever. Do you uh, carry protection? No. I Sometimes I want to. Yeah, I wonder if that would make you feel a little safer. Because it seems like it would be well within the store owner's rights to say, uh, hey, sir, madam, uh, you know, you mind taking that hood off? You mind uh, taking I'm, your glasses off for me? I've gone into stores before that have had signs that said... Uh, no hoods over your head, no sunglasses. Yeah, it's the same with banks right. too. Like remove all hats, remove all I I wear. I mean that. I mean, for pretty much the same reasons. I've well, been asked. I guess like, 
<laughs> yes. I get so offended because I wear a hat and sunglasses a lot of places where I go, and I've been asked in the bank mm-hmm. to take them off. And I'm like, yeah. what? I'm wearing a fedora and some, you know, like, please, what are you afraid of? But it's a policy, and they're well within their right to ask me to take my hat off. So, you know, what do you think about yeah. that? They do have that right. Yes, they do. So they, then it's not an issue, because right. if, if the store owner's afraid, then they can ask you to take it off, and if they're not afraid, they won't say anything. So it's a non-issue. Well, like I said, I've been in the store, and I've just kind of been afraid for myself to see somebody walking there. They've got those hula hoops, they've got these big glasses, and you can't see them. Then they've got their hands in their pocket, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I wonder if something's going to happen here. I better get out of here. Hmm. And I'm out of the store, and I didn't buy anything. I'm gone. Well, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, I'm that, sorry that's you feel that way. That's fear. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what you can do to turn that around. I, I mean, I think maybe learning some martial arts so that you feel confident that you could protect yourself if you ever came into harm's way, carrying some sort of protection, might, uh, and, and then training with that protection so that you're confident you can use it uh, successfully. I would love to get some protection. You know that? I would love to. I've I've never had anything like that. Maybe I should. Empower yourself. I'm a 62-year-old black woman. Perhaps I should for my safety. Excellent. Is there a community Excellent. college somewhere near you, Rose? Yes, there is. You might want to check well, with the community, community college, college to yeah. see if they have some sort of self-defense class. Yeah, they usually do. Uh, you know, e- even if it's not the community college, there might be you know a church or some other organization that offers self-defense. And hopefully, Rose, I, I do hope that you know you do wind up getting some sort of self-defense training uh, so that you don't walk around being afraid. Exactly. Yeah, there was some, when I was religious, there was some expression like, uh, don't ask God to make uh, the world a safer place, like ask for the courage to handle it, you know? So I hope that you can have more courage. Me too. All right, rock on. (laughs) Rose, thanks for the call. So Derek, you've got a story real quick about a man that was killed for not showing identification. Sure. I'll make it a quick one. A man turning in stray cat to animal shelter killed by police after refusing to show ID. It really is that crazy happened in Dothan, Alabama. 30-year-old Robert Earl Lawrence was shot and killed by police on Tuesday night this week after he attempted to do a good deed by turning a stray cat in at a local animal shelter. What? Instead of accepting his good deed and taking the animal in without question, the workers at the shelter demanded that Lawrence show them his government-issued ID. Well, instead of giving him his ID, Dothan showed them the identification that he did have with him. Or excuse me, it looks like his name is uh, Robert Earl Lawrence. I think the the, the city of is Dothan, Alabama. I think the author made a mistake. Uh, the man showed him the identification he did have with him, legal paperwork that identified him as a sovereign citizen, or in other words, a person who has claimed emancipation from the government. Well, the employees of the shelter made a careless decision that would end the man's life. For some reason, they decided to call the cops. It was not reported that he was belligerent or violent with the employees at the shelter. The police were called because he would not show ID. For dropping off a cat. That he probably didn't have because he was carrying around this paper that says, I'm sovereign. Yep. And the people at the shelter were somehow afraid that this man was an animal lover and a sovereign citizen. So when police arrived on the scene, Lawrence was hassled by them for several minutes about showing his ID and his status as a sovereign citizen. Police then informed him that he was being placed under arrest, but when Lawrence attempted to resist, he was shot by an unidentified police officer. Unidentified? Oh, so they're, they're not releasing the name? It's not saying that he was a plain clothed. Officer. They're just not releasing the name. Okay. He was taken to a local hospital and died there. Uh, now, the author of this article, John Vibes of the freethoughtproject.com, notes that as with most police shootings, the media has been quick to drag the victim's name through the mud. Of course. And oh, bring yeah. up his past issues with law enforcement and even custody battles to justify the actions of the officer. 
But it's important to point out that sovereign citizens are frequently targeted by courts and police, which could turn any simple court case or police encounter into potential disaster, even more so than for your average citizen. And in conclusion, the political beliefs that Lawrence held or his past encounters with law enforcement are totally irrelevant to the circumstances surrounding his murder. Right. He went to the animal shelter to turn in a stray cat. Which is a good deed. Clearly an angry, violent man that wants to, you know, like, nuke the world. But we need your ID just to make sure that you're a real human dropping off the cat. Instead of being able to drop off a cat and save someone's life, he was killed for not showing government identification and for having unpopular political beliefs. Wow. Wow. That is a shame that that happened. And it's even more a shame that people that want to be free are drugged through the mud. It was barely a year ago when the Concord PD cited sovereign citizens as a reason for needing a tank. Online, in the meantime, Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 